morning, it's Jennifer from Gentle Subs. Happy 4th of July! Um, as, as all of you know, and most of you should know, I'm a dual national, so after celebrating the 1st of July, now I get to celebrate the 4th with everybody, so I'm really excited. And today, I have something fabulous for you. For the 4th of July, I have a brand new bubble wand recipe, and for those of you who already purchased my collection, it's free. All you have to do is go to my Etsy shop and download your collection, and it's in the in the store right now. So you can have all the perfect measurements, and there's a lot you can do with this more than just bubble wands, but it makes an amazing bubble wand. So I'm really excited about it. I can't wait to show you how it works because it's just it's so much so much better than anything else that I've come up with, and it's sodium. Uh, carbonate free, so it's sodium bicarb free, it's um, SLS free, and it is bubble mania. I'm telling you, this is fantabulous. It is, <laughs> it's awesome! So yeah, um, formulate with me or have fun and um, I will troubleshoot with you in the Etsy shop when you purchase the recipe. And thank you to all of you wonderful, wonderful subscribers out there who do support me in my Etsy shop. It makes me able to bring you even more fantabulous content. And because uh, then I can buy more ingredients and when I've got ingredients to work with, I'm going to be formulating, ladies and gents. Um, so happy 4th of July, and I hope you enjoy watching me make some uh, patriotic themed uh, bubble wands. And uh, so yeah, let's have some fun. Guys, since it's the 4th of July, I thought I would get out with my um, soapy kitchen and create something just for the 4th of July. And what's better than on the 4th of July than sparklers? So we're going to make a bubble wand that does the kind of a sparkle thing. Now, when you're going to use more than just glitter, we're going to put in Cocoa Pops. <laughs> Now this is a brand new, spanking new bubble wand recipe. There is no sodium carbonate, there is no sodium bicarbonate. It is a low salt formula with a yummy surfactant and a fantastic um, base. So the base I'm using is tapioca starch. So I'm gonna add my surfactants next. Place. All right, so we're gonna add some surfactant. And then, <clears throat> We're going to add some other emollients. <laughs> yeah, I should put on my glass. My uh, mask. Make sure you put on your mask. Where's my mask? Alright, mask is going on. Sorry guys, if it's muffled, I will try to speak louder. Alright, what else do I need? What's on the recipe? Okay, we need another emollient. Uh, one of my favorites. I'll put a little more emollient in there. And <coughs> I'm going to use mica, so I'm going to use a little bit of polysorbate. And because this is likely to get wet, I'm going to use a non paraben. Um, preservative. I don't want anything growing on it while it's wet because it is reusable, right? We want it to be reusable. Yeah, I wipe my hands off. Let's add some of these right now. My guess, my, my intent, if this formula works out, is that um, after you use it, you'll be hearing it popping on the countertop. Um, while you have your bath. So it's kind of like the fireworks part of it. You'll get the glitter in your bath, and this will kind of be the fireworks popping in the background. Um, it's not going to be air splitting like those, the big community fireworks, but is that everything? 
Yep. There we go. So this is part of my brand spanking new collection of recipes coming out. Um, just a reminder out there, those of you who bought the bubble um, icing recipe, I've got a brand new bubble icing, one that's pipes just like royal icing. So you can use any kind of tip. It's, it's not as thick as buttercream like my uh, moisturizing one. Um, so this is going to be super, super fun. So I'm going to add my second surfactant. Actually, I'm going to pick a fragrance. Hold on. So I picked a soda pot fragrance, a cola, because I love Coke. Coke is like so USA and Pepsi too, right? Let's hope that doesn't set off the reaction. <sighs> Alrighty, so is everybody going to have a barbecue? What are your plans? Tell me in the in the comments below what your plans are for the 4th of July. I can't wait to hear what you're doing. Whew. We got the barbecue on and we'll be watching the fireworks from across the water if it's uh if it's light um we actually do have you know a few other things we could set up but we're not supposed to <laughs> you guys get to do your fireworks in the summer it's banned in canada but we can buy sparklers year-round so we're getting sparklers and snaps for the kids all right so everything emollient is in this um bubble dough it's going to harden to make a bubble wand it's going to be super fun just you wait wrong one oh it's kind of setting off the reaction that might not work exactly the way i had intended i will put some more in later there is, must be citric acid in there. Okay, we got plenty. So we're at the point where things are sticky and dry. So when things are sticky and dry, let's really pull it out and start working the dough. Because it's a dough we want. Now I have about, oh golly, eight or nine different uh, bubble dough recipes coming out. I actually have customers who can't say their skin is too sensitive to traditional soap, but they do okay with things like Dove and the, uh, the surfactant based soaps that are on the market. So these soap doughs are primarily, um, with you guys in mind. This is not really a, you know, a lush kind of copycat thing we're doing here, but rather a, what can we do to create soap from gentle products that, that people can enjoy um, that are fancy and fun and fantastic. So um, I've got all my favorite gentle surfactants in here. Um, if you're a soap maker, you probably have a lot of these ingredients on hand. Um, now the recipes will be available individually um, or um, you can buy them in a collection when I finish releasing all the videos and all the different ones. So I'm hoping to do one bubble dough a week, but there's a lot of soap and stuff out there too. so. Um, if you don't want to wait for one bubble dough a week, <laughs> uh, the collection will be available in my shop um, right now, actually, as soon as I finish um, testing them all. And we've got some super, super fun things in store, um, just like this bubble dough. Isn't that fantastic? Okay. So this isn't the softest of all my bubble doughs. 
it isn't the smoothest, but it makes a fantastic bubble wand. So this is the one I chose. Some of them make great embed for bath bombs. Some of them are just awesome because of the ingredients. Some of them, some of the soap doughs that I've developed are great for facial and body scrubs. Um, each of the um, each of the components brings to it something different, which is really excited. Exciting. It's oh golly, Tita. Oh, I can breathe again. Holy cow. Do you notice I was getting short of breath there? Just uh, working out with a, a mask on. I would not, would not recommend it. Okay, I'm just gonna change my gloves because that looks like really, really bad. I'll be right back. Okay, next time I do this, I will definitely add the pop rocks after I've got the dough going. Um, I don't know if the pop rocks are still gonna have any reaction left. Um, like I said, this is brand new. You're seeing groundbreaking soap, soap magic right in front of you guys. Um, super, super fun. But even, I figured even if it does, um, it's going to have great um, um, extra emollients because that's cocoa butter that it's coated with. It's not just candy pop rocks we're talking about. I thought it would be protected because it's enrobed in cocoa butter, but didn't so much. So there we go. Live and learn. So this is a dryer dough. Um, if you've seen my woodland creature soap, that one is made with rice flour, which is super cool. And this is a starch. So starches are going to give you a different texture than different kinds of flowers will. Um, all right. So I think I'm about ready to do a little cleanup <laughs> and then make another big soapy mess because we're going to color these red, white, and blue. Okay, we're going to just eyeball it in thirds. All right, so the first mess we're going to make. <laughs> so if messes bother you, I'm warning you, you need to either fast forward me while I clean up in between or, you know, just know that that's coming. Um, it's going to be the wet, red, the white, <laughs> the white. Now this is fairly white, but because I added the cocoa butter, um, and a few other things, it's not as white as it would be. And it is drier. And that's because I knew I was going to be adding more stuff to make it a little more mushy and squishy and fun. So that's glycerin and titanium dioxide. We'll see if we need more. Like I told you, it's going to get messy. We're starting with the light and working up to the darker stuff. Now, if it gets too, um, to be added too much, just add some more of the base, which, um, this one is actually tapioca starch. So I'll be right back. Okay. So I got a little bit of starch added in there. Hopefully, I don't repeat that same mistake, but I may. Let's see. Add some more. I wanted to try to use all of this. There we go. So you're going for a certain, you know, whiteness and this is nice and white. All of that I used to think about, I don't know, a bunch. Alrighty. So I wanted that much so it's that white. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just gonna knead this. It's a little bit like making pasta. I was watching Salty in Seattle, I think she's called, make uh, uh, pasta. And it got me thinking about my soap doughs and all the things I could do. And you know what, guys? Some of these recipes 
uh, lend really, really well to mixing and blending. Um, I don't want to waste any of that, so I'm going to try to work it all back in. Um, but do you see how it's changed from crumbly to more of a dough? Now, there are lots of really great actual soap doughs out there, but I'm, I, it's hard for me. My hands uh, get really, really sore. And I know you can soften them in your um, KitchenAid, but this is just so much freaking fun. I, I'm kind of addicted. And since I had a need within my customer base to fill a niche, what the heck? I mean, I, I still do make things with soap dough, uh, that's soap, but these surfactant doughs are fan-freaking-tastic. Oh my goodness, I think they're awesome. All right, and not everything I may think I make is awesome because I've made a lot of mistakes. You make about 20 mistakes before you have a success a lot of the time. Now I am going to clean this up because I want some bold colors, some vibrant colors. So I'm going to change my gloves or wash them off and then we'll start in on the red. Okay, let's start on the red next. Okay. So as you can see, it's a, oof, it's a nice dough. Okay but it's gonna get even nicer. It's not gonna fracture like that nearly as much when we get going. And that's partly due to my colorants. If you wanna learn how to make your own colorants, click the link in the eye, um, and you can make your own liquid colorants. Especially if you already buy your own dry colorants, which is what I do. Get a lot more bang for your buck that way. Now this is kind of a pinky red. So I will be adding some um, of a darker red to it. Don't worry, it's not gonna be red, pink, and blue. I also chose this because those, like I said, are cola flavor, uh, cola colors, whether you're a Coke drinker or a Pepsi, red and white is definitely recognizable. Um, but Pepsi is also all American, red, white, and blue. This time I'm going to use a Nurture Soaps, really red, mica, and I'm going to actually add a little more polysorbate to this because um, that one is a really red mica. <laughs> it, um, it may stick to any little bits in the tub that aren't perfection um, as far as um, clean, and I want my customers to always have a cleaner bath when they step out of it than when they went in. There we go, baby. That's going to be, that's what I want. All right. So we've got a little extra emollients in there. Do you see how it changed the um, texture of the soap too? You're going to have to knead it. It is like making pasta that way. Um, these do make good Play-Dohs, but I think they have more applications than just a play-doh um, and I'll show you one today that's what I'm here to do so really really red hands Look at that. Ah! <laughs> I'm going to use it all up make it nice and as uniform as I can oh I like that I like that. That's really, really nice. Really, really red. Fold it, fold it, fold it, fold it. That is super pretty. That's exactly what I was going for. So there is our red. All right, so here's our last one. And again, you want to learn how to make your own dyes. I put a BB in the bottom and give it a big shake. It works really, really well. Hopefully that'll be enough, but if not, 
um, I have a tendency to get the powder dyes right up my nose. And so <laughs> developing my own colorants, um, it's kind of a, a must <laughs> for me. It's not something I could just, you know, take it or leave it. Um, that's going to need some powder though. That's going to need a little powder colorant, just like the red did. Um, but it comes in real handy when you're doing melt and pour. Um, and sometimes projects like this, when you just want a little tiny bit and you don't want to have to pull out all of your, um, your ingredients, these little teeny tiny, um, containers will last forever. I could make a gallon, a liquid colorant with one of these little tiny things. So, you know, really great investment for you. Um, if you want to make, make your own. All right. I'm going to get some powdered color and put that in there. Now this one isn't as powerful as my European colorants, my water dispersibles, for example. This is just good old FDNC. Blue 2 Aluminum Lake. And this one I got from Chemistry Connection, I think. Making Cosmetics. So we're going to need a little bit of something, something for this. I'm going to use some emollients. I'm going to use glycerin before we get too much there. I'm going to take a little bit of that away. See, every once in a while when you do it like I do, yeah, I get too much. If I can take it in there, then I will. Otherwise, we'll save that for another project. I just take it in powdered coloring everywhere. I really, really do. I think we might be okay. That worked a little better. Additive. See, you learn things. You learn things. Learn by doing. Oh my goodness, that's awesome. Gonna have to add a little bit of powder, maybe. Do not. This avocado oil. It really likes that. I put some in the main. I think it's one of my emollients. Yes. Really is. Totally stinking awesome. Awesome sauce! And that's getting close to the color that I want. That's just about right. And again, you're going to get a purple bath if you use a lot of it. I'm not sure because this is a reusable product. Um, and when I say reusable, I mean you can use a little bit or a lot. And it works. I have a little girl who loves bubble baths. So we make a lot of bubble bath and uh, this works really, really well. It's got less drying. It doesn't have any salts in it at all, which makes it less drying. Sometimes it's nice to have those salts. In fact, I did a magnesium salt bubble dough. Spoiler, if you want to get the collection. All right. There we go. There's our blue. So we got red, white, and a blue bubble dough. Bubble wand dough. We're we'll right back to make our sparkler suckers. Alrighty, so we're gonna make the center to these sparklers. Now Of course, the sparkler part isn't going to be reusable unless our dough has some residuals. We will see. But we're going to add to these cocoa butter covered cocoa, um, pop rocks a, a glitter. So we are going to mica these up and make them look like silver. All right, so I've got sterling silver mica from Candora Soap, and we're just going to a little bit of in there uh, in there and give it a little swirl give it a little shake like that should get us nice sparkly 
center, and I'm going to put this in the center of our sparklers. Now these sparklers are going to kind of look like a twisty pop is the idea. Alrighty, so let's take a segment at a time. I'm going to make a big long one with this. So we're just going to roll a snake. Probably trying to make a too big a one. We'll see. I want to do like five or six of these at a time. So there's the first one. Let me just wipe this down. Scraper. Scrape it. Take another section. Now, if you're going to make these to sell, you're going to want to weigh out your set. Weigh it out. Get them equal. So I'm just gonna eyeball it here because that's what I'm gonna do. Oops. Oops. little too much, so we're going to even it out. As long as you keep these in the bag, they'll stay soft. So you got lots of time to work. All right, so it's getting a little too skinny there. You want them around. Oops. Two. The white. Definitely clean things up in between or your colors will mix and we don't want that. Oh, there's lots of bubbles. Sink full of bubbles over here just from rinsing my hands off. A little bit of sparkle going on there. No. This one's the driest of the three, so I may add a little bit of. Yeah, I'm going to add a little bit of of emollient to this, just to to make it a little more malleable. Just a little bit. And I'm using almond oil, uh, not almond, avocado oil in this one. That's going to be super de duper awesome in the bath, too. Alrighty, there we go. That's what I'll need. All right, so just grab a bit of that. Hopefully that's the right amount. I think just a wee bit more. You can see why I was thinking about the salty. <laughs> salty Seattle Pasta Company now, guys. All right, so we got three. All right, and what I'm going to do, hopefully, is create a bubble wand. Okay. All right, so we want a wand about that big. So I'm going to cut this in half. And then we're going to make it a little bit longer. I think I'll get two ones out of this one. All right. So 
I'm going to do is I'm going to twist it like this. Hopefully. Now in the center, I'm going to make a bit of a well. Put the pop rocks in there and push them in. Now this is going to be shrink wrapped, so when it's used the first time, it won't all fall out. There is the stick in it. Now this is going to have to put a little sparkle on there. This is also my American treat. So um, I'm doing candies of the world. So this is my uh, America <laughs> Cola Bubble Wand. Um, I'll probably change the name a little bit. But let's do another one. I just love this stuff. My idea was a lolly, like we used to get when I was a little girl in Utah. There's this really fancy ice cream shop. Absolutely loved it. So we're gonna dent the center right there. Pour those. Oops, too many. Pour in the pop rocks, and then I'm gonna sparkle it up. And add a stick. So these are in my Etsy shop now. Not only are they a patriotic little treat, but they're brand spanking new. You can't get them anywhere else. Um, and the recipe is available for sale in my Etsy shop. So come on in, happy 4th of July, and I hope you have amazing fireworks and amazing time, and uh, just have a fantastic celebration. Um, wish I was there. We had made plans to go to Idaho, Idaho Falls this year. They have the best fireworks. I hope you and Rachel have fun, Sarah. I'm going to miss you so, so much. Um, but yeah, I love you guys. Happy Independence Day. And uh, have a wonderful life.